Good morning guys and welcome back to Armored Warfare, it's Jaeger262 and I am doing another news episode and today we have a little bit of news to talk about. As you can see here, my.com and Armored Warfare are doing events for VE Day or Victory in Europe Day tomorrow, which is tomorrow, May 8th or May 9th, which is the date they have here. So here in the States, it's... May 8th, but I don't know about the end of the Great Patriotic War, which is what the Soviets referred to World War II as. They might have ended it a day later when American forces actually met with Russian forces in the middle of Berlin. So they are running a couple of really good boosts, and some deals are given premium time away for a lot of discounted prices but i'll get into all that later a new skin new com well not new commander but new commander deals i guess just little things here and there some good some just lame but i really wanted to talk about is the object 490 the reason i wanted to talk about this one more so than the other vehicles we've gotten in the battle path is because I wasn't entirely sure that we were going to get another tier 10 vehicle, which is what I said in the last um, video I made. I wasn't sure that we would get one, but not only do we get one, we get a pretty strange vehicle indeed. And so, again, I'm going to encourage you to read the whole article. But unlike the other vehicles, I think this article is actually really telling and much more necessary because the other vehicles, they're just normal vehicles, you get a kind of history of them. This vehicle never actually saw combat or even saw experimental status. They only built one and it ran a couple of trials and that's this one here. And it's just a hard vehicle to find any information on because the Object 490 had two variations both of them only made it to the model stage and I think they actually built one up which is this picture here and then the object 477 which was a different tank but under the same project type and so there's limited resources on them in fact the real the first real images of the 490A model and what would become just the 490 which is this one first surfaced in about 2015 so it was not so much it was just a secret project that on top of being a secret project in the 80s when it started it just kind of got buried because it never really went anywhere but it is a very cool and unique vehicle and we're going to talk about just some interesting interesting stuff i mean you can see here how the gun works and when i get down to the bottom here and i talk about how it works in game this is going to more closely resemble the Swedish Stetsvang 103. So if you play World of Tanks, you know that is the main battle tank that has no turret. It's basically a fixed gun tank destroyer that uses pneumatic suspension to elevate and depress the gun. And this vehicle is a lot like that. So just some background, and I'll use this great cutout image they provided. This was started in 1980. And I think the first real test for it and the first real design of this particular vehicle was in 1982. And the idea was that the Russian military wanted to find a better way to protect its tank crews. And so they combined a bunch of different schools of thought on this from how to angle armor, where a gun should be placed, should there be crews in a capsule or like in a hard cell like in what is in the modern T-14 Armada. And so this vehicle kind of tried to do all those things at once. It uses two separate track systems and two separate engines. So that way if the front tracks get taken out or if one of the engines get hit, the vehicle can still retreat from combat. It uses a massive 152 millimeter gun. And the reason it uses that massive weapon system is because they felt that it would provide enough penetration to basically obliterate any western threat at the time and that's it's going to be in armored warfare the same gun that the t14 armada 152 uses 
and so it's going to have 850 millimeters of penetration and I forget what the damage will be but that's the main reason why this is tier 10 is the gun anyway the reason it has such a strange shape beyond just having all that is as you can see here the crew which is a crew of three were in the very back of the vehicle and so if I go up here this is where the crew is housed right here under this slope and so the idea was that even if a shell penetrated this and was able to actually get through this angled armor it'd have to go through all the the two engines here and then all the ammo here to get to the crew now of course in tank combat in real life is if a shell makes it through the tank especially where ammo is concerned doesn't matter where the crew is they're gonna die but the idea was that penetrating this area frontally would be near impossible and indeed it was especially because the Sabo rounds or the uranium the pitted uranium rounds just couldn't punch through this armor angle not because it was thick and the reason I said especially because is this whole vehicle is designed around the NATO 120 millimeter depleted uranium round the Russians saw that as the biggest threat to vehicles at the time given that they would have to face Western ve if they had to face Western vehicles in combat that particular shell was the most dangerous and so this whole vehicle was planned to negate that shell and it does it quite well now if we get down get to just how it looks in the game there's some really interesting aspects of the vehicle for example there is no elevation and no depression this vehicle will use just like the Sitsong 103 pneumatic suspension or hydraulic suspension to go up and down and it has a 45 degree arc which you can see it goes 360 with the guns just straight in the air because of that slope so what they're showing you in this picture is it can only go 45 degrees left and right so it's pretty much going to operate like a fixed gun tank destroyer but that is where the difficulty in operating this ends also they have implemented some things to kind of nerf it before it's even out which is just balancing I don't know why I said nerf it just to balance it uh, one of the things is they're making the 152 less accurate although if I remember correctly that doesn't really mean much because the 152 on the T14 Armada is already less accurate than most tank weapons and it's still pretty effective however that is where the negative aspects of this vehicle kind of end and it becomes sort of another type of super premium like the object 279 was when it first came out the way that they designed it is that and it talks to you about these characteristics here is all of this will be easy to penetrate because it's just the side of the vehicle and that's how they balanced it because they gave this three thirty two hundred, 3200 sorry 3200 hit points which is the same as the challenger ATDU at tier 10 and they made it so that way frontally it is the strongest tank in the game right now at tier 10 armor wise the only tank stronger than it is the challenger 2 ATDU and that's only because it has thicker turret armor than this because this has an unmanned turret but the reason that they don't really consider that a downside and why I personally won't consider that a downside is that unmanned turrets take way less damage so I'm only looking at it based on hull and hull wise what they say because they won't release the numbers yet is that this is going to be the thickest and most heavily armored vehicle at tier 10 which is kinda crazy to think about now if we look in here and it gives you a little bit more about what some of the other perks are you'll notice that they have this experimental Soviet hard kill APS so what that was is a 26 millimeter mortar projectile and you can see all of them around the tank here that would be launched at any angle to stop incoming threats so right now it would put it's going to operate exactly like the Afghan system on the Armada which can take down a lot and so it would be one of the most powerful tanks I think the only other tank that has that kind of APS would be like the Merkava 4 
And so to compensate for that and not make it as powerful as the Merkava and also keep it relative, as you can see here, it will not be able to shoot down standard projectiles. So they've removed that ability from it just so that way it's not completely overpowered because again, it has better frontal armor in this layout and again, everything's subject to change. They could change this or it's not actually accurate and they're just trying to hype up the vehicle. But as of now, according to this article, it has the best armor. So it's going to be more heavily armored than the Merkava. So its APS couldn't be as good as the Merkava. And it wouldn't be fair. You couldn't do anything to kill it. Another thing that they did to help balance it, and this is the real life part, is not only is it going to have the limited gun range, but it will have very, very bad hull traverse, is what they've said. So it will be easy to flank. While it's going to be one of the fastest MBTs in the game with a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour, and that's because of its two 1,000 horsepower engines, it won't be able to traverse its turret as, or excuse me, it won't be able to traverse the vehicle as fast. So turning in this vehicle will be very hard, and you obviously can't do it at top speed. And the idea is that if you see here. I lost it. Oh. Even the flanks will be heavily armored and practically immune to auto cannons HG shells. And top down missiles will not be able to penetrate the roof because of how heavy it is. However, if you do flank it, because that's going to be the only way to knock it out, which they say right here, how to knock this monster out. The only way to do it is to flank it because while it's going to be super thick for all other vehicles, it's relatively thin for tier 10 MBTs and tier 10 tank destroyers, so you will be able to penetrate this, don't worry about it. But if you're in an AFV or if you're in a T4, T15 Armada and you're trying to flank it and fire like Pele rounds or any other kind of auto cannon around here at the back, it will not penetrate because they reinforced the roof, which is also why top down missiles won't work. So this thing, for all intents and purposes, is completely impenetrable except for in. MBT versus MBT combat. So it's already really OP and the 90 km an hour top speed is ridiculous because if you will see here it has the same maximum forward and reverse speed so you'll be able to run away from opponents relatively quickly and the reason they get for this is that uh, you don't actually have to repair an engine if it gets knocked out so even if you knock one of these one of the engines in this vehicle out it won't stop it from moving. Now it obviously won't be able to go 90 kilometers an hour, but it'll be able to move as fast as some of the other MBTs and not have to risk being immobile to get flanked. So it is really insane. It's just a crazy, crazy vehicle. It does get the crouch mode, quote unquote, which is part of that hydraulic suspension from for example, it's used on Object 279. So while we do have other hydraulic suspension in the game, the Object 279 or the BMD series can lower their vehicles to the ground and that increases rate of fire and accuracy and lowers camo factor, or raises camo factor rather, because it lowers the profile of the vehicle. It'll be able to do all that and get all those benefits. The only thing that makes this tank vulnerable is what they get to here is that 45 degree gun arc. So the only vehicle we have with a limited gun arc in the game now is the Typhoon 2 and the the Weasel Toe. Both of those have limited gun arcs and that's it. But it, essentially what they're saying is for anybody playing this vehicle you want to keep all your enemies in front of you obviously. Don't play it like a normal MBT but it's also a perk for people playing against it. If you're fast enough, then you can just swing around. And once you get past this point here where the, this little box is, the tank won't be able to hit you. Anywhere beyond this point is defenseless. And so that's really great, but I have to remind myself or anybody listening, really, that it goes reverse 90 kilometers an hour. You know, that's ridiculous. So even trying to flank this vehicle unless you're in an AFV you're not going to be able to get around it if it just starts reversing to get away from you and even if you do flank in an AFV you can't penetrate it 
And so I'm really worried about implementing this vehicle because even with all the stuff that they've put in place to kind of make it balanced, it is still incredibly overpowered. And the reason I worry about that is because I don't want to see Armored Warfare get more and more premium based. And their premium vehicles right now are incredibly balanced. Even though it took a while to balance the Object 279, even that one got balanced. That one was super OP, so I'm not too, too worried about it. It's just that this vehicle is unnecessarily overpowered. I mean, it's a tank that was designed in 1982 to operate at the top of its level in 1982, and they've boosted all of its stats so that way it's dealing the same amount of damage and being competitive with vehicles that were literally built in the past four years it's just kind of ridiculous it's kind of sci-fi on their part and so I'm worried that for people who do get this vehicle it's gonna really cause a lot of problems on the battlefield however because it's tier 10 because there's a battle path which is their reasoning here no small feet do not worry so the idea just like with the Alte they do not plan on a lot of people getting this vehicle and it's designed that way and so my problem with that is instead of putting crazy OP vehicles into a battle pass system and making them either impossible to get which you saw with the Alte uh, people spending hundreds of dollars to get it why not just make balanced vehicles that are fun and you just unlock them throughout the course of a battle path I don't get it I mean this vehicle's interesting I definitely want one but I don't think I'm gonna try and get it uh, they've made adjustments to the battle path mechanics in order to make it more convenient and fun. I don't know what that means. It leaves me cautiously optimistic. But again, last battle path, the average player, now if you're a really great player, it doesn't really matter. But the average player, especially with a lot of the PvP challenges, because for Americans, you could only play for about six or seven hours a day you had that window and it's in the middle of the day so if you work you're out of luck and for average players I think the time a day to do all the challenges to actually get to level 5 with the Alte even if you had bought one of the packages which is really what all the battle path is is to sell content you have to play for like 13 hours a day and so it was kind of ridiculous they said they're gonna change it to make it more fun and make this vehicle harder to get at the same time but I would just be prepared for another event where you just have to throw money at it until you get a vehicle that will be unstoppable. And well, I know a lot of casual players like myself won't do that. There's a lot of guys who have either already unlocked all the other vehicles at high tier or really want something unique like this and they'll spend any amount of money to get it so I don't think that the battle path mechanics are really going to change all that much one I don't think they're going to act as a deterrent to getting something like this the Alte didn't have anything it was just a unique battle tank it was Turkish I wanted to get it and I tried really hard I only got to like level 35 and I gave up because like I don't really want it that bad it's just it's a novelty this is different the incentive to paying all that money and working that hard is a vehicle that on paper right now will be unstoppable, unbeatable, and highly competitive. And so I really think that they're creating kind of a bad situation for this battle path going forward. But I could be wrong. I'm going to do the rest of the news in another video. It's just some boosts and bonuses for the V Victory in Europe Day and a T90 skin. So if you want to see that, just subscribe to the channel and get a notification when I put that video up. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It gives uh, it goes a long way to helping me create these videos and keep the channel going. And let me know what you think about this battle path. If you're skeptical about what Armored Warfare is really going to do. If you're skeptical about them adding this vehicle. If you like this vehicle. If you hate it. Just let me know in the comment section below. I love engaging with the community and love talking to you guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.